Hello, and welcome to another painting tutorial following the Harlequins. Um, so today I'm going to be painting the bluish kind of ceramic looking coloration that um, you might have seen on some of the finished models. Now with this model I've already gone ahead and started layering some of my base colors, putting in my blacks and shading them up, and doing the baseline for my non-metallic metals. I've already gone ahead and painted the little eye detail here with the little fiery lightning bolt on the uh, right side, well, his left side. Um, but let's get started. So I'm taking some of my uh, Reaper black here, the solid black, and I'm gonna mix it with some magic blue from Vallejo. Now this is my base color, my starting color, and the saturation of it, it's its fairly blue. It's gonna be a little bit noticeable as far as how much blue's in it. I'm just gonna layer in my base coat. Now with this, I'm trying to be careful to avoid hitting any of my other finished work. And I'm gonna use this to cut in the, the little eye that I did beforehand because I really don't want to shade all this up and then have to go back and dot in that little red area on the inner part of the eye. I mean, it's possible, but it's just torturous to do something like that. So I always think about the order of where you're going to put your paint what colors you're gonna do, like if you wanna paint the eye first or not. When I'm doing flesh tones, I'll, I'll paint the eye after I've laid in my skin tones. Cause skin, skin tones are pretty easy to go back and fix, but all the layering work that are on these characters is, it's pretty hard to fix when you mess it up. All right, so to highlight this up, and for the base coat, one coat works really well because the, uh, the blue and the black coat really well. I'm going to take uh, Verdigris, which is another game color paint. And I'm going to start adding it to my base coat just very incrementally. Um, my plan is to be able to paint the whole face here on this video but I might only be able to get to one spot because it might take a while get the nostril even though the nostril really can't be seen on the model I want to create one I want to add a sharp highlight so you see right here where I've added just a little bit of a highlight. That's going to be my guideline moving forward. And so this is just layering. I'm going to layer up each color incrementally to create the illusion that I've blended all this together. It gives you a lot more control than trying to work with really thin, thin paints. And do some translucent layering, which it seems like a lot of people have moved away from. More about layering up with the solid paints as opposed to layering with the the really, really thin and watery paints. Now, some of my step ups will be a little more drastic than others, but I'm going to go back and work between those. That's one of the benefits of working with a wet palette is having your colors be available after you've done multiple areas and you've blended up spots 
one if you mess up you can go back and add more color and So just to demonstrate here, I'm coming back and I'm adding a little more of this base color here. And let's just work on the forehead. You see how that blended those two colors together that previously kind of had some hard lines? It's just that simple. Because the step right there it's just a little more incremental than it was previously with that hard white line and then we have our second color and our base color now second color and base color you can still see a line there so if i go back to my base color and i grab a little bit of white grab a little bit more of it make sure my brush is wet get it where you guys can see it and then go in between these two See how that faded down just a little bit? And then there it's almost gone. And then like magic, I have a, a pretty smooth blend starting. Let's go ahead and work on the forehead a little bit more. Bring it up. So you guys don't have to sit and watch me paint the whole face. Well, whole half of a face. And I'm sort of bringing my highlights up the edges just a little bit so that they can V down into the forehead. And then each time, add a little bit more vertigree. I'm using verdigris instead of white because I don't really want to desaturate my blue too much. I want to keep it nice and colorful. I've got an eyebrow here that's a little bit round. I kind of want to pull this down make it a little bit sharper. Still practicing the art of uh, painting with light in front of my face and a camera up my nose. Getting better at it. A lot of respect for those people that have been doing this for years. And some more verdigree to my black and blue base. Coming back, it's a pretty bright color. You almost don't need white with this one. I got a little pip right there. I go back and fix that. Again, that's the benefit of having your colors on the palette. So you can see what they were before, so you can match them. And I've used most of that. It was a little bit wet, so. Did you guys see me fix my little mess up? All right, there, it's gone. Oop, trying to get a focus for you. So we got some fiery eyes. We got this face sort of starting to blend up. I'm going to go ahead and finish this off camera, and then show you the end result on the on the thumbnail there. For the beginning of the video but that's the that's the process for the blue it's pretty quick it's pretty simple um, not a lot of colors involved only the three um, if you have any questions um, let me know uh, let me mention real quick that again brushes make a huge difference i don't work for windsor newton but i will promote their brushes because they're amazing um, i've heard of some people getting um, brushes that are kind of flayed out on the end but these things are just they're like little knives they're they work great for for painting so if you're gonna step into the realm of detailed painting I really suggest you know maybe 
hopping over and getting you a real uh, art brush. Uh, that's it for tonight, and I will see you guys next time.